Jones in to Get Fit live cooking show. We are doing something so different, something we have never done before, right? I have brought this show to you from the Jones kitchen uh, in the background, you know, and we're cooking it. Well, I don't know if you noticed, this is not the Jones Kitchen. We are mixing it up. I am down here in Slidell, Louisiana uh, for a Beachbody Summit thing that we have going on later this week and fishing and filming, oh, of course. What else would we be doing? But we decided to have some fun and bring the live cooking show down here with us instead of just showing you a replay because really, live is better than a replay. So I am here with Jester uh, and she is sharing her, one of her favorite dishes, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, share with me. Uh, a mouth-watering, amazing dish for you called crawfish. Now, how many of you had crawfish? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Crawfish edifé. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. What, what inspired you to, to share this recipe or make this recipe? Well, it's something that is fairly quick and simple to make. Perfect. And it's delicious. Etouffee um, means smothered in onions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's, it's really pretty simple to do. And of course, being that you are in Louisiana, yeah. I did want to show everyone how to make a roux. Okay? Perfect. Uh, so we're in Louisiana, we're going to learn how to make a roux. Never made one before, this is all new. Edifé, I've had it, means smothered in onions. Some people, you were telling me that uh, the meaning's changed a little bit. That. Um, instead of smothered in onions, it's being smothered in vegetables. Yes. Maybe that's a way of making it healthier, I don't know. But I'll give you a hint. This recipe, it's not necessarily the healthiest no. recipe in the world, but it's freaking delicious and you are absolutely going to love it. So, um, I'll hand it over to Jester, I'll help out where we can and we'll, let's see what we can do. Let's let's make a crawfish out of faith. Here we go. Alright, we're going to start with the roux. We'll bring you over here. Start with the roux, okay? I got one cup of cooking oil, which this is actually peanut oil. So we got one cup mm -hmm. of peanut oil. Perfect. All right. And then when that warms up, you put one cup of flour. So one cup of flour, one cup of peanut oil and after it heats up. This is, is something that you have to stay on and babysit the whole time that it's cooking because there's different variations of different roux for different dishes. This one is going to be a blonde roux. So it's going to be about the color of peanut butter. Hmm. So what what is a roux? Because I'm not sure. What, what it's is the it? base of a gravy. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. It's a thickening. Uh, you know, it goes in soups, not soups, stews, and uh, okay, brown gravies, anything that you, you know, meat gravies and stuff, gumbo. Perfect. But but you know, for gumbo you do um, a little bit darker. Okay. For a seafood gumbo or, or a shrimp and okra gumbo or something like that, it's a little bit darker than peanut butter. For a chicken and sausage gumbo, it's going to be even darker than that. It's going to be uh, mm, like a dark copper color. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. kind of like the, the gravies that you would make for other dishes, right? You know, if you have right. chicken or something, it's going to be lighter than, right. than a, exactly. a beef. Exactly. It depends on what meats you're working with and what you, you know. So how are you making the different colors? Well, you just... Happen. This is what you have to do. You have to stand here and stir and stir and stir. So that's one cup of flour in there with one cup of oil. Oil's heating up in the skillet. And you just keep stirring. Yeah. So is the color based on how hot it gets? Yes. Oh, okay. For the learning. You try stuff. to keep it at about a medium to medium high heat. All right. Medium to medium high heat. Mm hmm. Perfect. And get all that dissolved and all the lumps out because that's the worst thing in the world is to have a lumpy roux. Yeah, you don't want to bump, uh, bite into flour. That's yeah, nasty. Don't in your do mouth. it. Bursting in your mouth. Mm -mm. Nice and smooth roux. Perfect. And over here, I'm melting a stick of butter. So we got a stick of real butter here, folks. Real butter, real butter the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. If you're from Wisconsin, you know what real butter is, right there. So one stick. Which is, uh, I believe, a half of a cup of real butter. Changed upsides in the kitchen for y'all, folks. And in that, I'm going to do my onions. And I have two cups of green onions and four cups of yellow onions. So two cups green onions, uh, four cups of yellow, you said? Yes. Yellow onions. 
for but that one. You can use yellow or white onions. You don't want to use Vidalia's because they're real sweet. You don't want to use a real sweet onion. Perfect. So, not sweet onions. Check. Well, look at that gravy. It's, or the roux. Mix it up there. Yeah, it is almost. It's a very faint peanut butter color at the moment now. So, the more you cook it, the, the thicker does it get as well? Yes. Okay. And uh, we're just going to do some simple seasonings, like some Tony Sacheries Creole seasoning, a Get little a bit of salt. Close up of that. So we have Tony Sacheries. Sacheries. I could say that. Creole seasoning. So any type of seasoning really works, uh, or you generally want like a good Creole yeah, seasoning? Yeah, because it's got the, the, the cayenne pepper in it, and it's got different, you know, the different a little flavors. onion, a little bit of garlic, but I don't like to put those whole vegetables like that in my etouffee. Okay, and then some salt as well. Yes. Okay, Just perfect. A, a bit, because my butter is salted. So this was a stick of um, salted butter, correct? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, let's check out the, the room now. It's starting to bubble up. Perfect. All right, well, what can I do to help here? Is I hear the... They're bubbling up a little bit, the butter is. Let me move you over, sorry folks. Hands getting in the way here, trying to transfer the phone to the stand here. There we go. All right, here goes the Ooh, you hear that sizzle, folks? You hear me talk about that all the time. You want that sizzle. Perfect. Keep stirring this roux here. So yeah, there's a other onions in there. So six cups of onions. Wow. I'm stirring this. In. We're gonna put you over there, folks. Keep stirring away here. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, you just smell the onions just instantly. It's, really nice. it's so beautiful. <laughs> I did cut them up. I did not cry. Yes, this did. was the first time I think I've never cried cutting onions. Must be a Louisiana thing. It's the first time I've ever had anybody offer to cut onions for me. And I got something. Just hold on. Oh. Surprise. Cool. So this is a totally different cooking show than we've ever done before. So as we're doing this, mixing up, making something unhealthy because you got to treat yourself every now and then, folks. Be sure to like this video. Just click down there, like, it's one of the sides. Click like, share this video with your friends, your family, by sharing it on your wall. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. If you're not, watch it. if you're watching this on Facebook, have you subscribed to our, Facebook, our YouTube channel? You should do it. Awesome, ooh, that looks fancy. Okay, so this is Whoa. a little... Gotta rinse it off now. Yeah. It happens. See, real show, this stuff doesn't happen on edited shows. Well, it it's live happen. shows. I could. So what what is that alien looking thing you have? This thing is a, a cheater. So that sometimes I can leave the stove. Ooh, a way to leave the stove. Cool. When you're cooking a roux. It is a cool little invention. I don't know if you can see that folks. It's like a space alien here, uh, in the room. Just cooking. So it has little prongs uh, that are on the bottom and it just shakes around and automatically stirs it. How cool is that? Yeah. That's awesome. Very, yeah. very cool. Nice. Wish they would have had those years ago. I know yeah. my mother would have loved it. Well, then you wouldn't have to be babying it. Like, oh. Okay. There's an issue with it every now and then. Yeah, yeah, when you forget to turn it off, it's an issue. <laughs> so, what temperature are we cooking these at? Here, I mean, I see the butters or the roux boiling. Yeah, pretty it's consistently. On medium high. Okay, so medium high for the roux. And about medium for the onions. So you just want to cook them until they, you know, get clear. So medium for the onions. You want to cook them to, until they're clear. Uh, it's really going, you know, they have tr turns translucent, and that's what you're looking for. But anytime you cook onions, really, unless you like the rawness of them. Tony's. 
So they're just starting. The, the fragrant, uh, fragrancy of them is growing a little bit even more in here. So now she's adding seasoning. It's been a couple minutes. Add a little bit of salt. Uh, add a little bit of the, the Creole seasoning. Now, I don't know if you noticed her in the background that she was spreading on. She didn't measure. It's true. Not everybody measures. And it's okay. So just add it in. See how much it looks. Taste a little bit. If it tastes good, I don't you're taste set. Anything. She, okay, she doesn't taste anything either. I, I cook by smell. She does it all by her nose. That's amazing! By her nose. I need to taste because I'm not nearly that talented. She just smells it goes, oh, a little more, a little less. How cool is that? I can't do that. It don't work when you have a cold. Though. It doesn't work when you have a cold. Good point. <laughs> uh, have you noticed some interesting creations when that happened? That you had? All yeah, I did. Juice. I cooked a, um, a seafood gumbo one time and I was so disappointed in it because it just didn't come out right for me. Now the question is, did not, were you not happy with it because you just couldn't taste it because your nose was stuffy? Or? No, because I had put it in the freezer and took it out after the cold was over. Uh, mm. And I wasn't happy with it, but my husband's crew was real happy with it. They actually had a job out of town in Venice, Louisiana. Okay. And so he packed up all the gumbo that I had in the freezer because I complained about it so much and he took it down there for the crew to eat and they loved it. Now our husband's in construction uh, and we're in Slidell and Venice, Louisiana is about an mm, hour and a half-ish or so south of here yet pretty much at the end of the world in Louisiana terms. So, and the crew loved it. Awesome. See, everybody has their own preferences. Sometimes you like something or you don't like something, other people might love it. You never know. So what got you really interested, Jester, in, in cooking and doing all this? I mean, I, I've heard raving reviews about your cooking from your son, your husband was just raving about it. What, well, what got you interested? I've been cooking since I was about eight years old. My mother worked in a restaurant and she would take something out of the freezer to cook and um, I'd get bored and I'd call her and ask her, Mama, what did you want to do with this? Hmm. And so I would start cooking it, and then oh, I learned how to cook basically over the phone, my mother just telling me what to do, and I did have a lot of trial and error, but... Now, did your kitchen ever turn disastrous looking when she got home, or were you I, pretty good about it? I'm pretty good about cleaning as I go. Nice. Um, my children, not so much. Fred, that might be directed at you, I'm not sure. But you never know. I know, I know for me, um, I got started cooking at a, a young age as well. I don't remember. My mom always showed me and had me help along, but I always wanted to do something. They're, they were gone this one time. I was home alone. They told me directly that I should not, like, play with anything, don't use a stove, don't use whatever. But I'm like, I want to make dinner for them when they get home, so well, let me do something. And uh, so we, we have a little one here trying to enter in the door. It's kind of fun. Um, so I want to do something for him, and instead what I did is I, I didn't use an oven, I didn't use the stove, none of that. I made waffles, right? So we had a waffle iron, I dug it out, I'm like, I had no idea how to make waffles at the point, and we didn't have like the Bisquick mix or anything like that, it was all from scratch. So then I had to open up, this is before Google, so I had to open up a cookbook, learn, learn how to make, uh, learn how to make waffles and like what sifted flour. I had to look in a dictionary for that. All stuff before Google. Anyway, learned a lot. Kitchen was a disaster, nonetheless. You gotta go around. Yeah. Yeah, the little ones running around. It's fun. <laughs> Live cooking show. That's what makes it fun. Um, so anyway, kitchen was a mess. My mom freaked out. Thought I burnt the waffles. I didn't. They were chocolate waffles. It's okay. Anyway. Chocolate waffles. Chocolate waffles. Delicious. It, Kitchen wasn't that much of a mess. Oh, yeah, just a well, I, I keep to getting distracted. I'm sorry. I should be starting. Oh, that's okay. I get on my stories. When I uh, visited a friend of mine in Mississippi, I'm a city girl. I'm from New Orleans, so I don't know nothing about cooking. You know, I, I had no idea how to make a biscuit. Mine always came out of a can. Okay. Um, you know, and I go to her house, and she cooked homemade biscuits and chocolate gravy. Have you ever had that? Uh, biscuits and chocolate gravy, no. Oh my I... god. It is wonderful, wonderful. And I've not, never tried to do it, but, because um, I know... Sometimes you just, you taste something and you, you don't want to recreate it. You just want to I just want memory. to have that memory, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want to disappoint myself. 
Okay, so look, our roux is getting darker now. Check out, let's check out our roux. Here we go. So you can see it's darker in color mm -hmm. already. You smell the difference in it? Let me smell here. Oh yeah, definitely. It's a little more, it's much more rich yeah, all so of a sudden. It gets a little nutty, kind of Yeah. roasted, nutty. That's the word I was looking for, nutty. Kind of like me. <laughs> Perfect. All right, and I think we can go ahead and turn this off. So that is the lighter nice. room, right? Right. We have to keep stirring because it's still cooking. So you're on an electric stove, uh, so I would assume if you're using gas, it would be less stirring time afterwards, although the cast yeah. iron holds heat anyway. Yeah, it does. So keep stirring it because you don't want it to, to burn, or what happens if you stop stirring it? Um, it's going to burn. I'm going to stop stirring for a few minutes, and then I'm going to let you start and see what's what, what going on now. All right. This one. Keep stirring this thing here. Look at those onions. Everything translucent. Hard to see if you can see it or not. Mm -hmm. Steaming. Smells beautiful in the kitchen here. Holding the camera with one hand. You see? Hey, you can check this out. It's already getting nice and thick. Look at that. When I stopped stirring it for a second, or when I picked it up, it started getting a little thicker on the bottom like it is right now. I don't know if you can see I'm kind of, you almost see like little chunks coming up. Mm -hmm. Just got to keep stirring it. You don't want it chunky. Ropes. I'll take a Perfect. look now Thank so you, you can know. She's yeah. laughing at me. I'm, I'm using it, stirring with my left hand. I'm not left-handed. All right, back on the stand you go, folks. Here we go. Hands free now. All right. All right. You going to keep stirring that? Yeah, you can keep stirring that. Perfect. And these onions are almost done. So the onions are almost translucent, almost, and that's on a medium heat. You see, it takes some time. It's a very easy recipe. It just takes a little bit of time. You gotta be patient. But, it's not like an 18 hour um, crawfish, was it crawfish bowl you were talking about? No, uh, gumbo. gumbo. She's a gumbo, yes. Her, her gumbo takes 18 hours to cook. It's a two day affair to make this. Thing. Unless you wake up way too early to do it. It's a, make it a two day affair. This is the most important part. All right, the most important part coming up. Always use Louisiana crawfish. Do not buy Chinese crawfish. Okay, so the most important point of this whole thing, only use for this southern gumbo, uh, southern crawfish out of fe, is Louisiana crawfish. Not, not the Chinese crab, not any other stuff. Get yeah. the true. Uh, it's peeled Louisiana crawfish Tails, that's what she's using. Mm -mm. From Thibodeau, Louisiana. From someplace in Louisiana that I can't say. Perfect. <laughs> Not good with, yeah, I'm just, we'll just leave it at that. So have you made them ever, like, crawfish from scratch, or have you always gotten them uh, in bags? Like well, that? years ago, um, I had a friend in, in St. Martinville, Louisiana, and he was a, a crawfish. Okay. And he, at the end of the season, he would, you know, just bring, they were just so plentiful at the time, mm -hmm. and he would bring whatever he had left at the end of the day to the house. Oh, wow. So we had crawfish purging in the bathtubs, oh my God. and we had crawfish, I mean, everybody, we had the kids and everybody, we'd parboil them and peel the tails and put them in Ziploc bags and put them in a the freezer. Oh, wow. So you got them fresh and then um, froze them for later times. Right. Right. Nice. And it, it was... Like that for about two weeks. Oh. It was everybody had to work with crawfish. Right. It's kind of like uh, up home in Wisconsin when my family went deer hunting and you know, we harvested our own deer instead of taking them to meat markets. So for a solid week, that's what you were doing. I mean. Okay, you can let that go now. All right. And we're gonna pour this up into a uh, coffee cup. A coffee cup. I love coffee. Because I want the, the root, the flour, to settle down to the bottom okay. and the oil to rise to the top so that it doesn't, you know, all that oil doesn't so it, come in here. So by so. putting it in the coffee cup here, um, she's going to let the, I don't know if you heard, make sure, it, we'll say it again, that the flour settles and then the oil separates and comes to the top, I assume, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
Make sure you use a big enough coffee cup, folks. See there? Oh, yeah, you can see. Here, I'll get that closer so you all can uh -oh. see. There you go. Oh, here. Ooh. Got it. Around here, so you can see. So you can see the flour right there. Bottom of the pan. All right, and the Mickey Mouse coffee mug. You can't be Mickey Mouse. Yeah, we are big fans of Disney. Awesome things. Love Disney. Check this out. Starting to boil up real well here. I mean, take over here and just stir it with my left hand like an idiot. <laughs> there we go. It happens. Been out fishing all day. This is a nice break. Mix it up a little bit. Go fishing. Make another type of seafood. It's delicious. Okay. So we got it separate. How long does it take to separate? Um, it takes a little while. It, it doesn't, t you know, as you were cooking, right. you felt how the, the oh, flour yeah. was settling down to the bottom. That's what you saw me pushing up was right. the flour in there. So, um, it, it won't take too long for it to separate. And the onions are almost ready for us to put the roux in. Okay. And let it cook for just a few minutes before we put the crawfish tails in. Okay, excellent. So, the, the onions are almost done, almost translucent. It takes time, right? Uh, but that's all good. We're letting the roux separate, and then we're going to add it in. And then we add the Louisiana crawfish. Perfect. All right. Well, look at that, folks. How cool is this? We're mixing up. We're doing something totally different than we have ever done before. So exciting. Um, I appreciate all of you watching this. Thank you so much for joining us. We're not done yet, so you're not off the hook yet. But so exciting. I would love to see some of you make this recipe. Uh, if you do make this, please take a picture of it, take a video of you making it, and uh, share it with me, Tag Jones and Get Fit uh, on Facebook or however, you know, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Take us with your picture. I would love to see your creation. And we'll make sure we share it with Jester, because she would love to see what you're doing with her recipe. So awesome. Mix it up. If you like this traveling cook concept or you like having guests, uh, cooks on the show, let me know. Put in the comments below. Uh, say yes, no, we love seeing other people on here. Or Spencer, we're sick of looking at you. Just be quiet and let the other person talk. That works too! You can totally have that. Oh, these are looking good. I'm getting free transition here. Oh, it smells so good. You top. Oh. That's how you make some of this up for your family. You make enough and you have leftovers, you can be eating good for an entire week. It won't last you a week. It'll last you like a day, two days tops. Even like as much as we're making here, it'll be gone. Just by me. Perfect. Okay. It's separating, uh, I can see the oil and flour separating in the cup. Hooray. A little bit. Off the stove and we'll start the rice. Ooh, rice, alright. Perfect. Alright, we got some water in a pan here. We're gonna start making the rice. What kind of rice do we use? Um I just have some um some rice land, just long grain white rice. Okay. And uh, most people steam their rice, but I boil my rice. So a lot of people steam it. Um, we're, she's boiling it. Awesome. She's in long grain white rice. Awesome. If you wanted to make it a little healthier or something like that, but why would you do that with this recipe? Really, you could use um, brown rice, long grain, things like that would work too. If you want to pretend to be healthy. Oh, important stuff happening over here. She is separating out, you can see that, the oil from the flour by gently pouring from the coffee cup into a measuring cup. I imagine another cup would work too. Yeah. Perfect. So now we're leaving the oil stuff there and we're heading over here. Whoa. Switch around. Gotta grab utensils. They're important. Ooh, look at that. And make sure you guys see. Oh yeah. Perfect. So she's digging down in the cup and really getting all that 
flour and the roux. You know, I never knew that's how you made it. Or well, that was added. That's that's smart. It smells amazing. And it looks like peanut butter. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Show it in the pot. The house smells amazing. I mean, your family, your neighbors will be drooling when you make this at home. Open up the window, let them smell it. Unless you have the AC on, then don't open up your windows. Here, down in Louisiana, like we are right now, it's high 80s, 88, 90 degrees, something like that. 70% humidity. You walk outside and you're sweating instantly. It's crazy. Well, onions are something that draw people's, people in anyway. Um, I was raised in a restaurant at Clarence and Lefty's restaurant and bar in New Orleans. Okay. And of course, back in those days, they had the big window fans. Right. You know? And whenever business was slow, my Uncle Lefty would go in the kitchen and throw a handful of onions on the grill huh. and turn the fan on. And, that and within probably... minutes, people would start pouring in because it made them hungry just smelling the fried onions. That's crazy. Yeah. Makes sense. It smells so good, and it's a smell that carries, too. Oh, look at that. Look at the coloring. Smell o vision, don't you wish? You just smell that. Even a little more. So, how do you know how much to put in there? I, I, I normally don't measure anything. Is it like a consistency, how, how it looks? Yeah, or? just a consistency. So, what's the goal? Consistency here. Um, well, you're not going to believe the difference it makes when you put these crawfish in here. Okay. Um, I'll let her do the stream, the master. The crawfish have fat from the crawfish in them. Okay. Set when you pour that in here, it's just going to turn into a beautiful, rich, creamy gravy. It's a real Louisiana crawfish going in. Beautiful, get all the juice and all that beautiful stuff right in there. Mm -hmm. So let's say you didn't add enough roux, can you always add it in after the crawfish are in? Not really. If you didn't add enough roux, then you need to let it cook down. Okay. Some people may w want to put some, um, I, I would use cornstarch and water. Oh, just a okay. Just bit to thick thicken it up, but I've never had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens if you added too much roux then? Then it's just uh, add a add, little more? Add some more water. Add some more water? There you go. Yeah. Just like with gumbo. Exactly. Sorry, get out of your way. Somebody here. shows up that you weren't expecting and you don't think you don't have enough, add another pot of water. To gumbo the pot. soup. That's the best thing about it. All of a sudden you get company coming over because they smell the onions through the windows and you're like, well, I wasn't planning on cooking for you. We'll just add some extra water here, let it cook yeah. down the extra seasoning. You're set. That's right. All right that's awesome. All right, now I'll add a little bit of water. Got the rice starting to boil up just a little tiny bit. It's thinking about boiling. Oh, my goodness. Oop. Added some water. Just to help create more of that gravy, I assume. It's amazing that she can cook. I got something back. It's amazing that she could cook so well with me like bobbing around and like my head right by her elbow. She hasn't hit me yet with it. It's amazing. I'm like I'm right there with the camera holding. Chester's talented. Oop, a little more water. So you're doing this all by, I'm assuming sight now, as opposed to smell with the mm -hmm. water consistency. How? Yeah. What's the goal consistency for people who have never had edafe before? How, what's the goal? The goal. Is just about to show itself. Look at that. So right when you push the spoon down, you see it fill up with liquid. Nice, but not too much. That's perfect. Yeah. That's the goal. Okay. Oh yeah. So now we're gonna turn it down. Okay. It was. So it was still on medium heat. While we're waiting for the rice to cook. Perfect. Still on medium heat. We covered it. I should say Jester covered it. And turned it on low-ish, medium low, something like that. And just let it simmer down and stay all happy and hunky-dory in the pot. While we're waiting for our rice to boil. 
As I said, it's thinking about boiling. It's thinking about it. Does it smell good? Yeah. See, people are drooling already around here. It's amazing. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing dinner. So, folks, as we're watching this, or as you're watching this show, and you're liking and sharing this with your friends, make sure you add comments about, uh, with questions you have, right? So, I, I wish I could pull up comments on here. I'd see what they are so we can answer them right away. That'd be nice. Yeah. But um, I'll make sure to share them. Are you on Facebook, by the way? I know yes. you're, you are. Okay. I, I chatted with her on Facebook. I, who knows? So we'll make sure she's uh, on the, with this page. So if you have questions for Jester, like how can you put up with Spencer, or <laughs> um, like, hey, what's this thing? Um, feel free to ask. If she has time and all that, she'll be more than happy to answer. I'll help out as well so we can get this. Put it in the comments. It's all good. Share it up. This is a Jones and Get Fit live cooking show. That's not healthy. It's crazy, I know. But it's going to be delicious. So good. I've learned so much about food already from uh, just being here for the half hour before this show. Prep it. Help it. She prepped. I'm putting I'm the, the French bread Ooh. in the oven to crisp right now. We got French bread. You want to hold that up there? You can see. So we got real French bread, fresh. Leidenheimer's. From, from, from Leidenheimer. 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 And, and French bread, New Orleans. French bread. Mm. Putting it in the toaster oven there yeah. to... Warm it up and get it nice. It's gonna be so good. Are you drooling already? Yeah. So good. I'm not just talking to myself. One of Chester's grandkids is here. Yep, here she is. That, that, that. You're famous now. Here you go. You're famous. You want to be famous. Whoa. Uh oh. No. That's what happens. We get distracted by, you know, new famous YouTube stars. I always boil the pot over. If I don't boil it over, it's not gonna come out right. She always boils up. See, it happens. But she always does. If it didn't happen, it wouldn't be good. It's not a big deal. Wait, wait, you got comments on there? Are people commenting stuff? Can you see? Yeah. My brother Grant is just oh, looking it up. Any any crazy comments we can answer? Um, you see, most people sharing stories about how they learned to cook and when oh, they first started. That's awesome! Keep sharing. I love hearing about your stories. Yeah, they can, can I can I check out them really quick just yeah. so I can shout out names? Oh, you're an all star, thank you. Robert, awesome. Thank you so much for commenting. Robert, make it for your wife. She would love it. Make it. That's awesome. Um, Katie, that's so neat. Birthday. I'm thinking definitely, yeah, we can get that for your mom. That'd be sweet. Um, awesome. Taya York. Um, awesome. Taya, did I say it right? Yes. This is so much fun. All right, here you go. Thank you so much for sharing. Awesome. Fun ways to get up and get cooking. Share your stories. How did you get started? Uh, we heard a little bit from me and how I didn't burn the waffles. They were chocolate. They were delicious, by the way. Okay. Ooh. Let's show that. You get to wait. You don't get to see all that beautiful stuff yet. It should be smell -o vision huh? It should be. The show, we need smell -o vision Somebody get on that. We need it. Because, ha, ha, ha. Look at that. Beautiful. That's just rice boiling. You're not missing anything there. But that's money right there. Oh, oh. That looks so good. Delicious. Delicious. Yumminess. Ah, so good. Perfect. Wow. So, it's taken some time. We've been cooking for about 40 minutes or so. I'm thinking something like that. Uh, it takes time to do this. And with the prep time, it takes... We'll get you in the shot there. It takes a little bit longer, right? I mean, we probably spent 10 minutes, 5 minutes just chopping the, the nice. onions up. You know, and really that was about about it yeah. and just getting you know the the corn and the flour or corn the oil and the flour ready so maybe 10 minutes tops prep time but with the time it's, it's a really basic recipe it just takes the time to sit on the stove and cook but it's so good it's gonna be amazing you need to make this recipe and take pictures of it and share it with us and take Jones and get fit in it because I want to see you cook this Robert make it for your wife she'll love it he's so good Awesome. There are it's variations of this with, um, and I've seen it, but I've never eaten it. Uh, the shrimp etouffee, and I know that it has celery and um, tomatoes. A lot of people oh. put tomatoes in it. Okay. Um, I've never tried to do that. So if anybody has some good recipes with shrimp etouffee, I would love to see that too. Perfect. Oh, awesome. Yeah, variations, right? You don't have to stick, as you know from watching my show, and what I learned from Jester. We might read a recipe, but then we always adapt it and change it up. 
and there's different ones. So with this one, you can mix it up, uh, adding shrimp, right? And then add some different uh, vegetables in it. Now, when we were talking about, you said you've never made that vegetable etouffee before. You've always stuck with the traditional onion, onion. right? right. Um, how do you think someone would make it with vegetables? Let's say they want to make it a healthier, right? Um, they still use butter and all that, because butter is amazing and delicious. Yes. Um, so they make this, and, uh, and they want to make it a little healthier by adding vegetables. I would assume you would chop them up kind of like you would with an onion, right, to, to smaller yeah. bite-sized pieces, and essentially do the same yeah. thing. Celery, bell pepper, fresh parsley, tomatoes, stuff like that. I've yeah. seen recipes for butter like that. Even maybe some peppers in there, right. something along those lines could be really delicious. Um, and it, you can get crazy, you know, stuff you grow in your garden. It's a garden season, um, especially for folks up in Wisconsin and all across the U.S., really. So use that. Take stuff from your garden, what you can, add it to your edifice. It's not going to be the traditional edifice, mind you, because that's just onion. But it's a way to add it in there with the butter, let it cook down um, so they're soft, getting to be a soft point, and then we're ready to do all the other stuff with it. And the roux. You can also do a dry roux. Um, dry Yeah. What's a dry roux? A dry roux, you don't use any oil. You just oh. brown the flour. Um, just, you brown the flour in a pan? In a pan, in a, yeah. Or you can make it... It doesn't burn? There's, if you look up recipes for roux, you can do a microwave roux. You can do a dry roux. My aunt used to take her Magna White small roasting pan mm -hmm. and put a five pound bag of flour in it and put it in the oven and and make the roux out of that. Yeah, and, and just put it in jars, in mason jars, and save it for whenever you need it, you, you know, whatever so, you need. So she made a, a big base of it, or a big number of it, and then save it for later. Right. That's awesome. How cool is that? I never knew these things existed. You know, I've heard people talk about roasting flour in a pan, and I'll be perfectly honest, I thought they were kind of crazy, uh, because that seems like it would burn. But apparently it works. How cool is that? Now we learn how to make a roux. We're learning so much today. All of us are. How cool. All right. The rice is starting to soak up all the water in there. Get nice and soft. Starting. Perfect. Okay. So is it, again, when you're boiling rice like that, is it still the two to one ratio generally? Um, not really. I'll put a little more water in it if I'm going to boil it. I do steam sometimes, but I prefer not to. Okay. What? What's the difference? Because it's sticky. I don't like sticky rice. Okay, so if you steam it, it's going to be sticky. If you boil it, it's not sticky. Right. It's going to be fluffy. So then um, if you're steaming it, probably two to one ratio is a close one to stick with because it's not evaporating, right? But if you're boiling, it evaporates, right? It's coming up off the stove like that, so you want to add a little bit more. You can always add a little more water as it's boiling in. But you don't want to stop the boil in case you have a little, just not enough, right? Correct. Right. But Look they say things. that boiling it is not so healthy, so... I wonder why. She said that it's not as healthy, or she's heard that it's not as healthy to boil. Any food scientists out there? Why? It's still rice. It's just water. Rice. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know. I think it takes the nutrients out of it. I don't... Hmm. But yeah, I have heard of, like boiling veggies takes the nutrients out right. of stuff too, which I guess then it's in in the juice or whatever is left in the water, but all this goes into the rice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If you know, let us know. Put it in the comments. Let us right. know. You're gonna hear me say this a lot. If you haven't already, just put it in the comments. <laughs> oh, we got more comments up there. Awesome. Bring you over here, show you this rice here. Pop you off the stand. You guys are moving around so much today. It's hard to keep track of you all. You're moving up and down. Oh, you can see me stir with my left hand again. It's quite, I know, I'm gonna switch hands. I'm not gonna look that much of an idiot. <laughs> I already do, <laughs> it's a joke. See, I can stir slightly better with my left, with my right hand. So it's not done yet, you can see. It's still, still liquidy. Perfect, all right. Go back on your stand, folks, where you belong. Stay up there. Perfect. Bread's ready. Oh, beeping's happening. Bread's ready. Almost took her out with my elbow. I didn't. Hooray. Oh. So, is this something you could cook uh, the rice as we were preparing the other stuff? Yeah, I could have, but I forgot. Yeah, happens. Life happens. <laughs> you, you forget things. But you can. So, you can cook it as all the other stuff's cooking. I should have actually cooked it before you even got it. 
So you can pre-cook your ice too and throw it in. That works too. Grandkids. Oh, oh. You need to see this. We'll let you see this beautifulness. Off the stand you go. You've been good. You've been good, folks. There we go. Oh, yeah. So you can see that consistency right there. Perfect. Oh, it just smells amazing. Her grandkids are here lining up, probably watching the crazy person in the kitchen just standing there making stupid commentary uh, but or that and they're drooling so they might be hungry for dinner <laughs> might be it is 6 35 currently so probably drooling it's not not me i, I scare most likely will y'all go check on the babies please okay. perfect okay so the rice is done boiling nicely so she's straining it So when you boil it, you actually strain it like you do with any other pasta, then, right? Mm -hmm. And rinse. And then rinse it up, just like any other pasta. See, that's why they say you lose some nutrients because you boil yeah. it out and then drop it in. I thought maybe you left it on so it's soaked up all the water, kind of like when you steam it. Yeah, I don't. I just, it's sticky like that, and I just don't like that. That makes parts. sense. Now this makes sense. I understand now. I'm learning. Ooh, you okay? Yeah. It's hot. Uh, warning. Stuff that comes off the stove is hot. Not sure if you heard that or were aware. It's hot. <laughs> News to me. All right. All right, back on the sand. We're going to be getting down to some beautiful dinner soon. All right, what can I do to help here? You can slice the bread up. I can slice bread. Woo. She Sorry. trusts me with this thing. Sorry. Scary. All right. Okay. I'll let Jester take over while I cut the bread behind the scenes. All right, I'm fixing to make him real happy. I'm gonna make him a bowl. Eh, eh. Oh, you can't see me. Eh, 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 there we go. Right. How, how big do you want these slices here? Just about the same way that he had sliced that. Oh, perfect. He is her husband, by the way, in case you're curious how to go. And that would be um, about an inch and a half, inch. Not not like a foot or six inches. Just about an inch. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. Oh, I didn't cut myself yet, we're good. <laughs> Oh, warm bread. Oh, my goodness. True southern cooking. It's beautiful. All right, so what's happening over there, Guster? I'm fixing you a bowl. Beautiful. So what, what's going in this bowl? We got rice, I assume, and then... Yes, we got a, a spoon of rice. Nice. Spoonful of rice. And then you can pretty much make this any consistency or, or thickness you'd like with the rice and uh, crawfish, right? Mm-hmm. What have, what have you found to be the ideal combination? I like I like the juice, the gravy part. You know, I'm, most people in Louisiana, mm -hmm. they have a lot of rice. I like a little rice. So she likes a little bit of rice and a lot of juice and beautifulness. Oh, oh. Alligator Creole bowl. Look at this. Look at that, folks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's Jester, and this is her amazing, oh my goodness, it's so good, crawfish etouffee. You need to make this, folks. You need to try it. Get a close-up of that. smell o vision Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jester. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to dig in. We're going to dig in as a family. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure you like this. Share your story. Share all that good stuff uh, in our comments below. If you have questions, hit us up. We'll be happy to answer them and help you out. You just learned how to make true Southern Louisiana crawfish at a fay. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day.